But one soldier gets 17. What are you going to do? I'm going to kill them all, sir. It's part four of the films of Paul W. Sanderson, and time to wrap up with his movies from the 1990s. Although Event Horizon had not been a huge success, Anderson wasn't discouraged, and he wanted to plow ahead with Soldier, another science fiction film starring one of his movie icons, Kurt Russell. Soldier was written by David Peoples, one of the two screenwriters for the 1982 Ridley Scott movie, Blade Runner. Soldier and Blade Runner have a bit of a bizarre connection with one another. They are apparently set in the same fictional universe, but share none of the same characters. There isn't even any mentioning of anything that went on in the Blade Runner, but there is a reference to Tannhauser Gate and Shoulder of Orion, which were locations of battles mentioned in Blade Runner. So the film isn't really a sequel, and since it doesn't feature characters from the movie, it can't really be considered a spin-off either. It's sometimes described as a sidequel, but really you can consider this movie as having nothing to do with the Blade Runner. So, what is the movie about? It's about Todd. Todd is taken as a baby by the military and trained not to feel emotions and basically become an efficient killing machine. Because he has no feelings, he has no remorse. He'll even shoot at the enemy if they're holding hostages. After a long and successful career in the field, Todd and his fellow soldiers face an inevitable fate of becoming replaced by a new breed of genetically enhanced soldiers. They put Todd up against Kane in a series of tests to see who is better. In the last test, Combat Instincts, Kane defeats Todd and kills two other older soldiers who are ordered to help him. Todd and the corpses get dumped into a carrier ship and Todd winds up dumped on a garbage planet. He meets a group of survivors from the crashed expedition party who set up a community on the garbage planet. They take Todd in, though are puzzled and even frightened by his presence. He's looked after by Mace and his family and Todd tries to help out at the colony, though his extremely disciplined nature makes it difficult for him to carry out a normal life. He gets a flashback while training and nearly kills one of the colonists. Afraid that he'll hurt someone else, the colonists oust him. However, his former commanders and the new genetically enhanced soldiers are making a sweep of the nearby systems as combat practice. They decide to kill anyone living on the planet because officially they're not supposed to be there, which is when Todd decides he has to save the colonists from the assault. Todd, of course, is the main star and I have to say one of the most fascinating main heroes in a Paul Anderson movie though also probably the most ridiculed aspect of the film. Because Todd knows only discipline and fear, he can't carry a conversation, he addresses everyone as sir, and until he's kicked out of the colony can't even express sadness. Many people ridicule Kurt Russell's performance because he effectively speaks barely a hundred words throughout the movie. I think people who cling on to this as a weakness for the movie are, frankly, morons. Russell stays in character well, and although Todd's abilities of self-expression are limited, you can always tell when he does something with a little bit of attitude. It's his physical performance which is the most fascinating. Jason Isaacs returns once again, this time as the film's villain, Colonel Meekum. He's a relentless asshole, completely confident in the superiority of his enhanced soldiers and also absolute in his demand for authority, which is why he's constantly pissed off at Captain Church, played by Gary Busey. Even though Kane beats three of the other soldiers all by himself, he's still pissed at Kane because he gets injured and loses an eye in the midst of the fighting. All that because now he no longer has death perception. He's easily one of the best villains in Anderson's films, although sadly Isaac doesn't get nearly as much screen time as he did in Event Horizon. Kane is played by Jason Scott Lee and is a really menacing figure, especially when he comes back later in the film. Sadly, he doesn't get a lot of lines, but works well as a nemesis to Todd. Gary Busey, who plays Captain Church, is the only one of the officers who has any emotional attachment to the other soldiers and isn't convinced by Meekin's boasts about their superiority. He's about the only officer in the film who is at least at all likable or seems to have any common sense, ironically since he's played by, well, Gary Busey. Sean Pertwee is also back, this time as Mace. He wants to help Todd out and seems to be the most tolerant of his odd behavior even though he admits to his wife, Sandra, played by Connie Nielsen, that he is afraid of them. Sandra also learns about Todd's lacking emotional scale and teaches him cooking and gardening. What turns Mace against Todd for a while is an incident between him and Todd's son, Nathan. 
Nathan is mute as a result of being bitten by a snake when he was a baby. A bond begins to form between Nathan and Todd. At one point, a snake comes into the house and Nathan is scared stiff, but Todd tries to teach him not to be afraid and kill the snake with his boot. Unfortunately, Maze comes in and doesn't realize what's going on. The film also has an early appearance by Michael Chiklis as Jimmy Pig. Another odd name, but luckily not as bad as DJ Trauma. Chiklis is a cheery guy and Todd saves him at one point, but he's nearly choked to death when he tries to take a scarf to Todd as a thank you gift when Todd is having his flashback. There are loads of other characters I could talk about, but those are the only ones I want to bring up. One thing that needs to be understood about Soldier is that it's not, in fact, an action movie. After the opening, the film has a really slow pace, and there aren't any real action scenes until the final act of the movie. The rest of the time is spent with Todd getting to know the people of the colony, learning how to live a regular life, celebrating Christmas, and learning about how to care for other people. It's in fact a very beautiful and touching movie, with a wonderful story about tolerance, acceptance, bravery, and sympathy. Unfortunately, Soldier was also Anderson's biggest box office failure. The budget for the film was $80 million, which doesn't sound like a lot, but you have to remember that this was in 1998 dollars. Today, we don't even think about how expensive movies actually are, because it seems that the average summer blockbuster is in the three-digit mills. But this was long before Avatar, long before The Lord of the Rings, and just before Episode 1, Phantom Menace. Nothing in the film could be faked with location shoots, and that means everything in the film had to be built from scratch. The world had to be fabricated down to the minutest detail, and the film contains such an abundance of CGI which had not been seen outside of Jurassic Park, Independence Day, or Armageddon. The main reason the film bombed, according to Anderson, was that Warner Brothers didn't know how to market the movie properly. Anderson's intention had been to make a science fiction film with a serious story, well-written character drama, and a milieu that would appeal to an older demographic than the typical 17 to 25 bracket. WB instead marketed as a sci-fi action film, a maneuver on the same level of idiocy as the marketing campaign for Final Fantasy The Spirits Within. Because of this, it got a bad reputation since most people thought they were going to see an action film and not a drama. And to top it all off, the film was almost entirely ignored by the critics, and the few that gave it the time of day almost universally bashed it. Soldier is a criminally underrated film, practically forgotten, and even looked upon with regret by Anderson himself. The overbloated budget was definitely the biggest reason for the film's failure, but I also think people have misjudged it immensely. It has been bashed, ridiculed, and generally simply not given the credit it deserves. The set design is magnificent, the special effects look great, the CGI is surprisingly clean and detailed, the actor performances are great, and it has that Anderson pace, where you get the important story elements and the character dynamics well, and without dragging the movie out. David Peoples' script has been unfairly criticized in my view. The film is probably the best written of Anderson's efforts and entirely undeserving of the belittling attitude often directed at it. I am not ashamed to admit that the movie moved and entertained me. It's not simply my favorite film by Paul W.S. Anderson, it is easily my favorite science fiction film, as evidenced by its well-deserved number one spot on my top 10 sci-fi films list. Hunt down the DVD and give this one a watch, because it totally deserves it. My grade for it is a perfect 5 out of 5. When we come back, we'll see how Anderson got himself back into the movie business.